today it's different <laughs> it's always so funny <laughs> thank you <laughs> um good afternoon eq good afternoon teacher. good afternoon Agnes. yeah good afternoon teacher am i saying your name right Anya. 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 Okay. Make sure I'll focus on the Y. Anya. Cool. Good afternoon, pair. Or is it pare? I think it's pair. Good afternoon, Tete. Good afternoon, Tisha. No. Good afternoon, Mai. Good afternoon, teacher. Good afternoon, Kaimuk. Good afternoon, Otto. Good afternoon, teacher. Good afternoon, Froy. Good afternoon, teacher. Good afternoon, Q. Good afternoon, Gampu. Good afternoon, Dija. Good afternoon, Sulgas. Sulgas. Good afternoon, Nene. Good afternoon, Dija. Good afternoon, Rose. Good afternoon, Dija. Good afternoon, Unseen. Good afternoon, Mipu. Good afternoon, Lydia. Oh, hi, Mipu. Thank Good you. afternoon, Jisha. Hi, Lydia. Cool. Good afternoon, EQ. Good afternoon, Jisha. Great job. Good afternoon, C. Good afternoon, teacher. Good afternoon, Champu. Good afternoon, Moji. Good afternoon, teacher. Good afternoon, Pagim. Good afternoon, teacher. Good afternoon, Jai Jai. Good afternoon, teacher. Jai Jai, are you good at math? It says Jai Jai is good at math. Are you good at math? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Good afternoon, Poon. Good afternoon, Cow. Good afternoon, New. Good afternoon, Poi. Good afternoon, I. Good morning, Trisha. Great job. It's afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, Trisha. There you go. <laughs> it's okay. I do that all the time. Good afternoon, Palmi. Good afternoon, August. Good afternoon, James. Good afternoon, Baitoy. Good afternoon, Fa. Good afternoon, Pailin. Or Pailin. Good afternoon, Satang. Good afternoon, Pancake. Good afternoon, Tisha. Good afternoon, 
Ness. Good afternoon, Puri. And is there anything? Hi, thank you. Mm, I don't see any more names. Oh, good morning, Ploisai. I mean, I did it too. Oh my gosh. Good afternoon, Ploisai. Good afternoon, Jishin. Thank you. See, I, I did it too. <laughs> Okay, let's get right into it. So, hmm, your homework was to finish page 20, right? This page. Raise your hand if you finished this page. Raise your hand if you finished page 20. Thank you, Bam. Waka, waka, eh. Who else? Oh, I, nice job. Who else? Who else? Nobody else. Okay, well, we're going to go over it today, okay? So... And zoom in. And what they wanted you to do was read the answer and write a question for that answer. Okay? So, number one, you can read the answer. Who can read the answer? <laughs> Brother has their microphone on and has some background noise. I might want to just pause that for a moment. <laughs> um, let me go through the list. Plus I can you read number one? No? Okay. Ganpoo. Can you read number one? Okay. Bam. Can you read number one? Three mass is the hottest planet. Very good job, Bam. What is our question going to be? What is the question going to be? Which planet is the hottest? Yes! Which planet is the hottest? Very good! That's all you gotta do. All right. Number two. Let's go down the list. Nene, can you read number two? Yes. Perfect. The Amir Sun is the longest river. Very good. And what? Question can we ask to get that answer? What do you think? Hmm, Poom? Is Poom here? Poom, you may I don't think you responded to hello, so let's go with EQ. EQ. What question can we write? to get that answer. No, how about cow? Cow, what question did you write? Miss Liva is, Miss Liva is the longest. Very good job, Cal. They said, which river is the longest? So that's not wrong, but since they put yes in the answer, they want our question to be specific. So we would say, is the Amazon 
the longest river? Yes, the Amazon is the longest river. But great job, cow. Your, your question was not wrong. It's just not as specific as they want us to be. Okay, but great job. Thank you so much, cow. All right, champu. Champu, can you read the answer for number three? Champu. Ma. Ma. Jen. Everest is the. His. Highest. Yeah, highest. Highest. Ma. Jen. Very good job, Champu. You had a tricky word in there. Highest. The G is silent. I don't know why, but it is. Mount Everest is the highest mountain. So what question can we ask to get that answer? Freud, which question can we ask to get that answer? How about new? Are you here? Mm, how about Pagim? Pagim, what question can we write? Which is the highest mountain? Very good job, Pagim. Which is the highest mountain? Look at you guys go. Great work. All right, number four. Poi. Poi, can you read the, the answer for number four? Is boy here? Mm. All right, let's keep going. Anya, can you read the answer for number four? Anya? Yes, Mercury is the smallest planet. Very good job, Anya. And do you know the question that we can write? What question did you write? We can go down to oi, oi, what question can we write to get this answer? It needs to be specific because we're say, the answer says yes, Mercury is the smallest planet. So what question can we write? Oi? Is an person is the greatest planet? Okay, Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. Very, very true. But that doesn't ask the question that would get this answer. Can anyone help I out? How about pear? Can you help? What question should we write to get that specific answer? Pear? Hmm, how about Moji? Yes. Oh, Pear, you got it. It's the Mercury, the smaller planet. Very good job, yes! Is Mercury the smallest planet? Yes, Mercury is the smallest planet. So, ah, you worked wrong, your fact was right but it didn't ask the question that would get this answer, okay? But great try. And thank you, Pear, for helping. Number five, Moji, can you read the answer for number five? Moji. Antarctica is the coldest place. Very good job, Moji. And Sugas, what is the question? Sugas, I see that you're here. 
What's the question we can ask to get the answer that Moji read for us? So, guys, you may All right, we're going to go on. Number, uh, Tay Tay. Tay Tay, what question can we write? Mm, okay. Auto. What question can we write? Auto. Mm, okay, if you choose not to respond, you're not getting participation points. You're losing points on your grade. Lydia, Lydia, can you tell us which question or what question you wrote for number five? Lydia? This is the code test. Very good job, Lydia. Which is the coldest place? Antarctica is the coldest place. Very good job. Thank you. All right. What about number six? Mai, can you read the answer for number six? What's here? The biggest country. Very good. Russia is the biggest country. So what's our question going to be? Hmm. EQ? EQ? What's our question going to be? EQ? All right, going on. Palmi. Palmi, what's our question going to be? Hmm, how about August? James? Ha. Uh. They could be absent, and that's okay. What about by toy? By toy, are you here? You Mecha? No, okay, Fa. Mm. Unseen. Unseen. What's the question we can write for this answer? Unseen. Hmm. Okay. How about Pileen? Oh, EQ. Thank you. Yes, EQ. Go for it. Yeah, which is the biggest country? Russia is the biggest country. Very good. You guys are doing so great. Thank you to those that are trying your best. Number seven. Who can read number seven? How about Jai Jai? I'm just going down the list. Jai Jai? Hmm. Satong? Kaimuk? Okay, teacher Stan can not turn on the microphone. Oh, that's okay. That's fine. Who, Satan? Okay, what about Kaimuk? Kaimuk, huh? Hmm. 
อืมค่ะตอนนี้พี่เชื่อเห็นหนูเอ่อปิดกล้องกันทุกคนเลยนะคะทุกคนเปิดกล้องเดี๋ยวนี้เลยค่ะปหกทับห้าทุกคนได้ยินพิเชื่อตังกวางไหมคะเปิดกล้องเดี๋ยวนี้เลยค่ะใครที่ปิดกล้องอยู่เปิดกล้องเดี๋ยวนี้นะคะไม่งั้นคุณจะถูกเช็คชื่อว่าขาดเรียนนะคะแล้วคุณจะไม่มีคะแนนเข้าห้องเรียนแล้วเปิดกล้องเดี๋ยวนี้เลยค่ะหกห้าใครได้ในอังกฤษใครมุก what did you say oh cow gave us the answer or oh, he gave us the question which is the answer right Yes, cow is an elephant, the largest land animal. So our question is: Is an elephant the largest land animal? The answer is yes. An elephant is the largest land animal. Okay. Thank you, Cal, for that last answer. So that was our homework. Everyone should have that done. Um, and I, I believe I've already sent this to Teacher Tangwa. So if anyone needs it later, she can send it to your group chat. Right, Tangwa? Do you already have this one? Yes. Yeah. I have already completed this. Perfect. Okay. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna play a game. We're gonna play a game. Everyone loves games, so we're gonna play a fun game. Okay. What I need you all to do is just pay attention and participate. Okay. The more you participate, the more fun we have. So this is all about superlatives. Superlatives are adjectives that compare three or more things. Superlative adjectives. Compare three or more things. Okay. Fast, faster, the fastest. Which one is the fastest? A cheetah. A falcon or a zebra? Zebra. What is the fastest? Cheetah. Cheetah. Okay, let's see if it's a cheetah. Y'all might be surprised. Cheetah was not the fastest. The falcon is the fastest. Can you believe it? The falcon can fly faster than the cheetah can run. The falcon is the fastest. But great try, guys! All right, number two. Small, smaller. The smallest. Which one is the smallest? Earth, Mars, or the Moon? Ma, the Earth, the Moon, oh, the Moon, Mars. I hear some the Moon. Hmm, let's find out. The moon! If you said the moon, great job! 
The moon is the smallest. If you said Mars, great try. <laughs> Big, bigger, the biggest. Let's see, which is the biggest? Africa, Asia, or Europe? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's fine. You said, I don't know. That's okay. What do you think? Hmm. Asia. Asia. Yeah, maybe Asia. That's where we Ooh. live, right? We live on Asia. Let's see. Ooh. Yeah! Asia is the biggest. And look, right there, that's Thailand. That's where we live. We're right there. <laughs> Great job. Great guess. Heavy, heavier, the heaviest. Heavy. Which one is the heaviest? A blue whale, an elephant, or a bus? Ah, blue whale. Blue whale. Blue whale. I heard a bus. I heard a couple blue whales. Let's find out. Let's see. Yes! Good job! The blue whale is the heaviest. A bus is heavy, but a blue whale is heavier. It is the heaviest. Very good job. Hard. Harder, the hardest. All right, let's see which one is the hardest. Gold, diamond, or steel? Steel. Diamond. Ooh. Got two steels, got one diamond. Let's find out. Diamond! Great job! The diamond is the hardest. Isn't that crazy? It's harder than steel. That's why it's so expensive. All right, there it is, expensive. More expensive, the most expensive. Which one is the most expensive? A jet? A house or a helicopter? Jet. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. says jet. Let's see. Uh, no. no. Good job, guys. The jet is the most expensive. Very good. Hot. Hotter. The hottest. Which one is the hottest? I don't know. 
desert, beach, or the sea? Desert. 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 Oh. Sounds like everyone thinks the desert. Let's find out. You guys are so smart. <laughs> And I love how hard you are trying. Yeah! The desert is the hottest. Very good. Again, we see small, smaller, and the smallest. Which one is the smallest? Oh, a kitten. A hamster or a guinea pig? Hmm. Hamster. 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 Yeah, I think you guys are right. I think it's the hamster too. Let's find out. Although kittens are small, let's see. <gasps> The hamster is the smallest. Very good. Cold. Colder. The coldest. Which one is the coldest? The moon. Saturn. Or Neptune. 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 Thank you. You guys were paying attention in lesson one. Good job. Let's see if you're right. I think you're right. Yes, good job. Neptune is the coldest. Very good. Tall, taller, the tallest. Which one is the tallest? The Statue of Liberty, the Eiffel Tower, or Big Ben? Hmm. Eiffel Tower. Oh, I think the Eiffel Tower. Let's see. Yes, good job, I. The Eiffel Tower is the tallest. Very good job. Good job. You guys are so smart, and I loved seeing you all participate. That was pretty fun. All right, now we're gonna shift gears a little, and we're gonna go to our book for the last 10 minutes. Let me go to the menu, and we're gonna go to the student book, lesson five and six. So let me get my charger really quick so my computer doesn't die on us and I want you to take a look at lesson five on the left now I know there are a lot of words I know there are a lot of words it's okay we're gonna go through it slowly together okay so this is a, a passage we call a bunch of words a passage called Galileo and his telescope okay this is a telescope and this oh, is Galileo okay so I'm going to read and I'm going to highlight important words, okay? I'm going to highlight our vocabs and I'm going to highlight 
the superlative adjectives, okay? Galileo was an Italian astronomer who lived a long time ago. He was one of the smartest astronomers in history. He was the very first astronomer to learn about the solar system with a telescope. One of the first things he looked at was the moon. He saw the deepest craters and the highest mountains on the moon with his telescope. Okay. Let's keep going. Then Galileo studied the planets. He looked at Mercury, the smallest planet. <laughs> and Jupiter, the biggest planet. He discovered that the planets don't circle the Earth. They circle the sun. Galileo was the first person to see Jupiter's moons. There are 64 moons, but he didn't see all of them. He only saw four moons with his telescope. Then he saw something that looked like ears on the planet Saturn. He didn't know he saw the famous rings of Saturn. Right here, these famous rings of Saturn. Very good, let's keep going. Some people think Galileo is the father of modern astronomy. In 1989, a spaceship started a trip to study Jupiter and its moons. The name of this spaceship was Galileo. Here's the spaceship that went to go study Jupiter and its moons. Very good job following along. So, I have a question. What did Galileo study? Did he study telescopes? Did he study moons and planets? Did he study astronomers? Or did he study spaceships? Hmm, what did he study? What did he study? Anyone want to take a guess? What did he study? Moons and planets. Yes, good job, Bam. Moons and planets. He studied moons and planets. He used a telescope. He actually invented a telescope. And he was one of the first astronomers, one of the smartest astronomers. But he didn't study astronomers. He didn't study telescopes. He studied moons and planets with his telescope. Very good. Very good. All right. I have another video for us about Galileo, okay? And then tomorrow we will read okay. it again. Oops, pause. Tomorrow we'll read the passage again, 
Okay. I'm going to tell you about Galileo Galilei. You may have heard of him. He was a scientist and an inventor, and he lived about 500 years ago. Galileo is famous, you could even say infamous, for one of his big ideas in particular, an idea that got him into big trouble. Galileo liked to build gadgets to help him to experiment and to answer scientific questions. He built compasses, thermometers, a pendulum and a telescope. How did he come up with the telescope? The story goes that two children were rather bored and they were messing about in a shop that made glasses. They discovered that if they held two lenses in a line and looked through them, they could see a wind vane that was on top of a church steeple far away. And it looked as though it was right outside their window. When Galileo heard about this, he was very excited. He began to experiment with lenses. And he discovered that when he pointed his gadget with lenses towards the stars at night, he could see the moon and the planets in great detail. Galileo saw things through his telescope that no one else had seen. He was the first person to see the planets looking as though they're up close. And he could see some stars that no one had seen before. Galileo saw patterns of light and shadows on the moon's surface. He worked out that the moon was rough and uneven. He even had a guess at how high some of the moon's mountains might be. Galileo also discovered four large moons orbiting Jupiter, and they're now named Galilean moons in his honour. Then Galileo made his most controversial announcement. He said he was sure, based on his observations, that the sun was not moving around the Earth Instead, the Earth was orbiting the Sun. Galileo wasn't the first astronomer to say that the Earth moves around the Sun, but he explained it so clearly that lots of people took notice. 500 years ago, this was very, very big news. In those days, without today's technology, it made sense to everyone to assume that everything goes around the Earth. I'm sure right now you don't feel as though you're standing on a planet that's spinning on its axis while moving through space at several thousand kilometres an hour, but we know we are. What's more, there were even texts in the Bible that seem to say that the Earth is standing still. That's definitely not what Galileo was saying. So how did other people react when Galileo said loudly and clearly that the Earth and not the Sun is in motion? The church found this very difficult. For one thing, Galileo's work was impressive, but his version didn't totally fit with what people could observe. Secondly, if Galileo was right, that would mean a really big rethink about how to make sense of what the Bible said about the earth. This wasn't a completely impossible situation. Many Bible experts had been saying for some time that not everything in the Bible has to be understood literally. Any phrases in the Bible only really make sense if they're understood as metaphors or figures of speech. Even so, the church felt that such a big change shouldn't be rushed. They told Galileo he could talk about his ideas as a theory that seemed to fit with some of the observations, but he mustn't yet say he was confident that his ideas were right. Galileo was cross. He was sure he was right and he wasn't in the mood for keeping quiet and waiting. It was an impossible situation. The church was hugely powerful. Galileo got worried and agreed to keep quiet. Then he broke his agreement and spoke up again. Galileo was put on trial, he was found guilty, and he was made prisoner in a home that the authorities provided for him. He stayed in there for the rest of his life, developing his ideas and writing a science book. You might think that this situation would put Galileo off religion, but despite his quarrels with the church, Galileo remained a very deeply religious man who read and valued the Bible. How come? Well, Galileo attributed our scientific abilities to God. He believed that we humans can work things out scientifically because God has given us senses and brains which we can use to study nature and think about how it works. So, Galileo reasoned, why would God double up and use the Bible to tell us how the universe works? Surely that's for science. The Bible must have another purpose. 
The writing in the Bible is very different to scientific writing, he thought. The language is often visual and colourful and describes the way that the world seems to humans. The writing is personal. It's about people's lives and their struggles. What's great about the Bible, he thought, is that the people are struggling with the very same questions that puzzle us today. Things like, what should we be doing in our lives and how can we make a positive difference? Galileo remembered a phrase he'd heard a cardinal say once. The Bible is intended to teach us how to go to heaven and not how the heavens go. And so Galileo, the famous Italian scientist who invented the telescope and got in trouble with the church, believed throughout his whole life it's very important to have both science and religion. Hmm. Very interesting, right? Good 